Hello and welcome to the presentation on the globally harmonized system for hazard classification and labeling, the development of a worldwide system for hazard communication. This program is brought to you as a service of the Plumbing Contractors Association of Chicago and Cook County, the Plumbing and Mechanical Contractors Authority of Northern Illinois, also known by its acronym Pam Canny, and the Plumbing Council of Chicagoland. This presentation was produced and narrated by Strategic Safety Consulting. In relation to hazard communication and the GHS, 50 million American workers are exposed to hazardous chemicals. Over 5 million businesses will be impacted by the new GHS requirements in their workplaces. And over the past year, OSHA has issued just over 4,600 citations under the hazard communication standard. So what is the globally harmonized system? As you've probably already noticed by now, we'll be calling this the GHS for short throughout this presentation. First, OSHA revised its hazard communication standard back in March of 2012 to align with the United Nations program already in place. The intent of the GHS was to develop a common and coherent approach to defining and classifying 1. chemical hazards, 2. communicating information on labels, and 3. information on safety data sheets. Then also, the other intent was to harmonize chemical hazard communication globally. For example, one thing that may be considered flammable in another country may not be considered flammable here in the U.S., and vice versa. This slide discusses the GHS implementation timeline. As you'll note, the first date, we already discussed it, March 26, 2012 is when OSHA published the final hazard communication standard in the Federal Register. The next date, and probably the most important, December 1, 2013, is when all employees shall be trained on the new label elements and the safety data sheet format. The next date, June 1, 2015, is when chemical manufacturers, importers, distributors, and employers must be producing new labels and data sheets. June 1, 2015 is when chemical distributors can no longer ship containers that do not have updated labels. And finally, by June 1, 2016 is when employers must have all workplace labeling compliant with the GHS and hazard communication standard. The significant changes within the standard include the new labeling elements and the standardized format for safety data sheets. As we move through this presentation, we'll be discussing both of these thoroughly. As you present this information and train your employees on the new requirements of the GHS, some training tips to consider. Present information so employees can understand. Provide information to employees in a language other than English where necessary. Account for limited vocabulary and of course make accommodations for employees that are not literate. The new GHS labeling system. GHS calls for a harmonization in the labeling process to include standardized symbols and signal words. Information required on a new GHS label includes pictograms, signal words, hazard statements, precautionary statements, product identifier, and supplier information. These changes are expected to be applied to the workplace and consumer products. The label format is being outlined so that information is in the same location on all labels. Here's a great example of a label under the new GHS requirements. It's everything we just discussed in the previous slide. 1. Product identifier. 2. Signal word. 3. Hazard statement. 4. Precautionary statement. 5. Supplier identification. And 6. The pictogram. We'll continue to discuss some of these in more depth over the next slides. Let's now discuss the hazard pictograms. These are standardized pictograms that are intended to convey the hazard through common pictures or images. The pictograms for non-transport will be red bordered with white backgrounds and black symbols. Again, standardized. Just like the current requirement for hazard communication on workplace bottles containers, the GHS label should be affixed. Now let's look at the GHS pictograms and the corresponding hazard classes. First we have health hazard, representing such items as carcinogens, reproductive toxicity, and target organ toxicities. Next is flame, such items as flammables, pyrophorics, self-heating chemicals. Next is exclamation mark, representing such chemicals that have irritants, 
skin sensitizers or acute toxicity, harmful effects. Next is gas cylinders, simply gases under pressure. Next is corrosion, such items as skin corrosion or burns, eye damage. Next is exploding bomb, chemicals that may be explosive or self-reactive. Next is flame over circle, chemicals that are oxidizers. Next is environmental hazards, non-mandatory, but it represents such chemicals that may have aquatic toxicity. Finally is the skull and crossbones. We should all know this one, but it represents acute toxicity, chemicals that may be fatal and or toxic. This part of the label are the signal words. The words danger and warning are being used as signal words to emphasize the hazard and to indicate the relative level of the severity of the hazard as assigned by a GHS hazard class and category. Simply it's two words, danger for severe hazards and warning for less severe hazards. Another part of the GHS label are the hazard statements. These are phrases assigned to a hazard class and category that describe the nature of the hazard, including where appropriate the degree of the hazard. Some examples of these may include harmful if swallowed, highly flammable liquid and vapor, may cause drowsiness and dizziness, causes serious eye damage. Next are precautionary statements. These are phrases that describe recommended measures that should be taken to minimize or prevent adverse effects resulting from exposure to a hazardous product, covering such issues as prevention, response, storage, or disposal. Some examples may include wear eye protection, do not eat, drink, or smoke when using this product, avoid release to the environment, or in case of inadequate ventilation, wear respiratory protection. And now on to safety data sheets. Under the GHS, what we commonly used to refer to as material safety data sheets will now be referred to as safety data sheets, SDSs. These SDSs will be in a common 16 section format. The new GHS specifies the order of the information to be used, as opposed to the previous where it did not matter. The format is intended to, one, provide an easier document to read, and two, allow for quicker identification of hazards and dangers of a product. Now we're going to briefly review the 16 sections of the safety data sheets, only to familiarize yourself with the section headers. If you wish to get more information on the details of the SDSs, please visit the reference slides of this presentation. Section 1, identification of the substance or chemical and the supplier information. Section 2, hazard identification. Section 3, Composition and Ingredients. Section 4, First Aid Information. Section 5, Firefighting. Section 6, Accidental Release. Section 7, Handling and Storage Practices. Section 8, Exposure Controls. Section 9, Physical and Chemical Properties. Section 10, Stability and Reactivity. Section 11, Toxological Information. Section 12, Ecological Information. Section 13, Disposal. Section 14, Transportation Information. Section 15, Regulatory Information. And finally, Section 16 is reserved for any other pertinent information. As a great GHS reference, at the bottom of the slide you'll see a link to a United Nations document titled, A Guide to the Globally Harmonized System of the Classification and Labeling of Chemicals. Feel free to click this link or any other links at any time throughout this presentation as it will not disrupt it and open in a separate window. Here's some additional references. Feel free to click the links at any time.
This concludes the presentation. For questions and or additional information, please contact Roger Pavisa at Strategic Safety Consulting. All contact information can be found on this slide. To obtain your certificate of training, please read the disclaimer on the next slide. On the last slide, you'll be provided with a link to your certificate. From there, enter your name, and then feel free to print and or save the document. Thank you. Here you can access your Certificate of Training. Again, click the link, Certificate of Training, and you'll be directed to an Adobe file. Enter your name, and then feel free to print and or save the document.